Hello everyone, welcome back to my Let's Replay channel. Once again, this is Andrew T coming at you, and we're going to do our vlog review of the two games I just played of Icewind Dale, the Enhanced Edition, and of uh, Star Wars Dark Forces. Now, we're going to do Icewind Dale first, because we always go in order, or try to always go in order, and that is a great Enhanced Edition for what it was and when it came out. It's a little bit easier when you have the, the old Baldur's Gate and Bioware, you know, top down, third person, not their isometric views, because the graphics can be overhauled so that the backgrounds look better and it's not as quite as pixelated as it was when it first came out, but the mechanics are still there that made it good in the first place and the loading times are so much faster. So you're not waiting like 30 seconds every time you go in and out of a, a dwelling or doorway or, you know, screen to screen. So that definitely um, is, a, is a plus. So, Icewind Dale is just like Baldur's Gate, you know, except for uh, a couple major differences. The first thing is the character creation, and the first one is like, okay, what kind of character and race do you want to be? You get the whole game out of everything, and then you find companions that are close to the other classes and race that you can pick of, so that way you're not missing out on a whole lot, and you try to get a balanced party from that. This one, they give you six characters that you can create just out of the, out of the blue, so you can make your own party starting out, and that's the part you're going to take throughout the entire game, I'm guessing. So, instead of finding different characters that, you know, have their own little quirks and dialogue and stuff like that, uh, you create your entire party of however you want them to roll, and then you just go from there, from the beginning. Which I like a whole lot, because um, even though the characters in Baldur's Gate were great, especially Minsk, you know, Jahira, all those other ones that, uh, especially in the, in the sequel, Baldur's Gate 2, they fleshed out their stories a lot. It was almost linear in that you can only have certain companions in uh, after they got done with all their, you know, infighting and, you know, dialogue trees and all that. That was it. It's like, okay, when this one on uh, Icewind Dale, you don't have any dialogue between the characters per se, but um, I like it that they give you the option to just put whatever you want in your party. So, also starting out, the beginning area is great. Uh, the tutorial levels and all that were were pretty good. I didn't get to go very in depth. I only went to the did a couple of like tutorial missions in the first town. But after that, you go into a cave and fight some uh, some orcs. And then uh, at the very end of the cave, you find an ogre and some orcs, and that really tests your ability even on easy. So if you've got a lopsided party or you didn't prepare as well, that can definitely affect the the outcome of the battle. I did have to do it a couple times before I finally got the right uh, right set of circumstances where I can beat beat all those guys. And the level ups are still just as so much fun today as they were back then. So, I, from what I saw and what I'm seeing right now, just from playing through it, um, even afterwards, like it was such a good experience I got just doing the video that I'm still playing. I just stopped in order to upload my uh, video for Dark Forces and to do this uh, video for my vlog review. So. I'd say it's very, very good on the replay value. So this is going to be kind of a short one because you kind of have to get into it and uh, do your own character creation and your own stories in order to get the full experience of it. But one of the great things about it is that this was on GOG.com and they're like 1,500 game summer sale. So this was dirt cheap. I got like six, seven, eight games in two days for about just over 20 bucks. And that is insane for the amount of gameplay you're getting for some of these. Um, so, uh, if I had to give it a score on replay value, on you know current graphics, on you know just fun level, all that stuff that you know makes it nostalgic for me, I'd have to give it a a seven uh, because the price is right. The price is really low, less than five bucks, I believe, uh, on sale right now on GOG.com. Uh, the graphics are still sustainable to this day as long as you don't zoom in. <laughs> you know, if you leave it at the at the default like uh, distance from where your characters are, it still looks good. the The story is still good. The character creation is still good. The mechanics are still spot on. So, definitely a seven. Um, no higher because it is dated. It is a it's twenty years old at least game. And but the amount of replay value you get. Uh, the the mechanics of it, the storyline, you definitely get a bang for your buck, and you get a lot of replay value along with it if you want to just roll different characters or different uh, alignments, things like that, or play a different way, you know, multiple times. So I I would definitely pick this up on GOG.com if you're into this 
uh, sort of RPG, you know, slash strategy, slash, you know, character creation, whatever you want to call it. The old school Bioware style. So I would definitely pick it up if you get a chance. Now on the other end of that spectrum is uh, Dark Forces. <laughs> this is really high on the nostalgia list just because when I was a kid, the first game that we actually bought for our PC for the modern gaming was Doom. Uh, we did some Wolfenstein 3D like shareware back in the day, um, but Doom was the very first one that kind of was like, oh wow, this is really good. And then Dark Forces built on that to an even greater level. So this was kind of like the next generation of uh, first-person shooters in that it um, verticality was a thing, uh, platforming was a thing, secrets were a huge thing in it, uh, and it was in the Star Wars universe. So just getting to shoot stormtroopers and use the weapons that you saw on the movie screen back then was huge. And this was before the prequels, so before this was all nostalgic from the original trilogy. So... When you're playing the game, though, it does not age well on the controls. The controls are keyboard, arrow keys, and then Z to fire, X to jump, space to use, and C to crouch, and shift to run. So everything's kind of right there on that last corner row, but I, it's just not done in, like that anymore. You can use a mouse, but you're so used to using WASD to, for your movement keys, and it's so close to the arrow keys for your movement that your hands are almost like like this, this close. And it's just not comfortable because you're moving your shoulders and just trying to play the game. So I just uh, gave up on that and went just, you know, arrow keys with right hand and then, uh, you know, the uh, keyboard on the other side with the left and just work from there. But that only problem with that is that the, the swaying back and forth and the strafing is not is non-existent so you just got to turn and the turning is a lot slower using the keyboard than it is with a mouse so you can use a mouse but it's not recommended I would say for this one just because it doesn't feel natural um, storyline is about what you expect you know it's it's pretty good pretty decent the first level uh, the level design it, it's back then it was pretty decent just because I'm used to playing more straightforward for first person shooters that kind of hold your hand the first level this one's like no you gotta explore every nook and cranny of this entire level to get all these secrets and get all and get through it even because um and but it some of the things like the graphics like the switches and the uh the panels on the wall you don't know where uh at the beginning unless you know what exactly which switches do what you don't know what you don't know what you can click on so back in the days of Doom, you just kind of you know strafe the wall and just hit the use key every every panel, so that way if there was a secret door, it would just open up. So that's what you had to do back in those days. And so they kind of used that to go, okay, you know, we're not going to point you in the right direction. We're just going to let you explore as much as you want, and then you know the last place you look is going to be the place where you're going to find the next place to go. So you do a lot of backtracking in, in this game, especially in the later levels when they get huge. Like this level is just the first one. It took me for ever it felt like to get through it and so the graphics are very dated everything's um, it 3d illusion because it's 2d on, on everything it just looks like it's 3d because it looks like everything everyone's always facing you no matter how much you go around them so it's done very well in that aspect uh, it is ahead it was ahead of its time for the detail of the graphics and the cutscenes are still fairly good for this day and age if, uh, even some of the indie titles that out, out now don't do this well on you know animated cutscenes, and the voice acting is good on the cutscenes as well. But when it comes down to replayability, I cannot recommend it. Um, if it wasn't so dirt cheap, I probably wouldn't have picked it up. I think it was like ninety nine cents or maybe sixty nine cents on GOG.com. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll pick it up because it's that low or around that low. If it was any any higher, even like two ninety nine, I probably wouldn't have picked it up because you know only for nostalgic purposes when I pick it up again I've already taken it off after the video was over I'm like don't have any desire to go back to it um, if it was just for nostalgia it would be one thing but uh, I remember um, even the first time I played through it 20 plus years ago that how frustrating the game could be and finding out where to go and what to do and everything along those lines I'm like yeah I could be doing other things with my time so I have to give it a score. I get a five out of ten, just for the fact that uh, it the graphics aged not 
very well. The control scheme is too dated to be fun. Um, there's the mouse control isn't very isn't very good. Uh, there's no vertical. There's only uh, horizontal left and right. So yeah, for for the replay ability of it, if you, if you had to play through it just for to see the granddaddy of all the you know Star Wars good Star Wars games because this was the first actually good one that came out. Uh, then I, I would pick, I would do it for that, but you can't really replay it after that because after you've done it once, I don't think you'd want to do it again. <laughs> and so uh, the price would be right, like I said, because it was less than a buck. Um, the graphics, no. The controls, no. Uh, Storyline, yeah, it was okay, voice acting good. So that's why I only give it a five. It's not bad, not good, but not a uh, a game I would pick up in the in the future. Just because, unless you really wanted to relieve your childhood frustration and uh, and go with the old old school keyboard mechanics, so yeah, that's that's my uh, vlog review of Icewind Dale and of uh, Dark Forces, and I got a lot more games on GOG.com, so uh, those are going to be coming next week. And once again, thank y'all so much for watching, and y'all have a good one.